Hello, welcome to Chris Nelson Uncensored, episode six. I'm Chris. It is April 22nd, 2022, and I am here with Aretha Wimberly. How are you doing today, Aretha? I'm here by the grace of God, taking it one day at a time. Thank you. How are you? I'm doing good. Now, I, um, Aretha, I met you on April 5th at the Broward Commission meeting. When I came to Broward County, I loved working for the community. I loved the opportunity and the idea that I got to work and serve the community that I grew up in at the same time. I was very happy to have a career that was in public service. I had started it in the city of Fort Lauderdale and I loved what I did. And I honestly came on board with these just puppy dog eyes and just this wonderful idea of what we were going to be able to do in the community with the Broward Municipal Services District, the unincorporated areas. I was privileged to have the opportunity to be the community liaison. When I first started noticing, and it was apparent, that there were issues with how I was even hired, that the hiring processes that were um, extended to me through um, what she left, she actually recruited me, and as soon as I came on board, immediately began to be hostile and made my work life miserable. I was confused, dumbfounded, had no idea what was going on. I had just worked with this woman as my supervisor for about two years before I left briefly to accept a promotion with another city, and she literally recruited me to come back. I got back, and all of a sudden, nobody would give me the training I needed to do my job, I was asked to do sexual favors. I didn't know how in the world to uh, adjust or what I should do next because I did not want to be in that position. I was no longer 20 or 30 years old where I could just switch in between careers and move forward and move back and forth anymore. I wanted to retire from Broward County. In 2017, a year after I accepted that position, I submitted a complaint to the Office of Professional Standards. They did nothing. I pleaded with them, email after email, phone call after phone call, and in the meantime, I put up with what I thought I had to. I consented to behavior that was demeaning to anyone, not just a woman. And because I'm a black woman, I'm not a member of a sorority, I don't matter. I'm not personally related to anybody of power or influence, so I don't matter. And even though they pushed me out of my position, I had to resign for my mental health. Once I sat on the parking garage for three hours, contemplating whether or not I should just jump off the roof. And I got medical professional help. And you know what my supervisors still did? Because they were so disgraced. Yes, you too, Monica. You know what they still did? Said, no, you come to work or you can resign. We don't care. And it's all documented. And even today, you know what they do because I filed that complaint? Every job opportunity that I get, once somebody at Broward County has to verify my employment history, they make sure to sabotage it. They make sure to scandalize my professional career. They don't make it official, but they make sure. Okay. Most recently, I was offered a job by Career Source Broward, whose job is to help people find work. Once Broward County found out I was offered the job, they sabotaged it. So I would very much like to follow this item, and I want you to know that those numbers that are in those reports, we are people. And I would be very interested to see if you have actually taken stock of the hurt and harm you have done to people, not numbers. And it does not matter at which point I said no, um, I said um, no. Ma'am, I'm going to... Right up this hall, I was sexually assaulted, and they're still making sure he's covered. They're still making sure to make up excuses for his behavior. He is now an ass assistant county administrator not, on not, the board of a boys and girls club. What is he possibly telling young women? If your supervisor asks you for oral sex, give it to him? If he invites you to his office and locks the door behind you without your permission, so just accept it? And everybody here is okay with that. That is what you are doing when you turn a blind eye to these types of complaints. It's not just about staff inefficiency. 
you're hurting people. Thank you. Mayor, I'll ask a question to allow her to continue. Commissioner Bogan. I'm a real person, and I'll all her, those I'll numbers I'll are real people. Ask what, to finish, to let her finish. Well, that, that, that's it. I, I mean, because it's, it's you're saying you want to do staff. The person who did this to me, he's a member of SHRM. He knows every human resource policy there is. He has been in government for decades. He knows what he did and how he did it. He knows how he coerced other managers and people in his Greek family to cover for him. He knows how he did it. And he knows at the, the point I said no. He knows when I said I no longer want to participate and this is not what I want to do. He knew that by withdrawing his support I would become ineffective at my job. I could no longer do my job. And even after I resigned, I gave them what they wanted and I left. They continue to harass and retaliate and deny me the opportunity to be self-sufficient. Up until two weeks ago, I was literally homeless because I'm underemployed. Since I left here, they have done everything they could to, let, to send out the signal. Ma'am, can I ask Don't you? challenge them in this way. Ma'am, can I ask And you? I will do it again. When you say they, who's they? You want names? Maribel no, Feliciano, Josie Sisodia, Darby Del Sal, Alfonso Jefferson Jr. Ma'am, you, you do I need to get more Bertha I, Henry? Are you talking about county people? Is that what you're talking um, about? Did you recognize any of the names? There are all county name. people. Thank Treat you. me as if I committed an ultimate, unforgivable, um, unrepentant crime because I simply filed the complaint of sexual harassment hostility in the workplace and retaliation. Can you tell me, uh, tell us a little bit what happened to you? Um, after I accepted that position that I just ex described as a community liaison, a position that I love, uh, because it gave me the opportunity to earn income and literally serve the community simultaneously to make a impact moving forward projects and programs in this community where they really needed some TLC. They needed somebody to come in and give them some tender love and care and to also fulfill those promises that they had been uh, promised about certain economic development programs, community beautification programs um, that they deserved in their neighborhoods. Um, I came on board just, I mean, just feeling blessed to have the opportunity to serve my community in that way, having grown up in that neighborhood, um, understanding what it is to be a Black woman in America who does not have access to influential and powerful people, who sometimes don't have access to information, who don't know how sometimes to um, get the programs and to services and resources that are available. And to be that person connecting people in my community in that way was powerful and impactful. And I just considered it to be such a blessing. What I didn't understand was there was this expectation for me to conform to workplace attitudes into a culture that's demeaning, that violates civil rights, that violates human rights. I was expected to have allow my supervisors to speak with me, to speak to me in a demanding, demeaning manner. It was expected um, that at any given day, they could just choose to be hostile, come and literally throw stuff on my desk um, just out of the blue. I have no idea why they're upset, why they're discouraged or whatever. Um, I was expected to perform duties without proper training. Um, I asked and asked over and over for uh, specific trainings to perform tasks and responsibilities um, to the best of my abilities. They refused. But um, I think the most profound and the, the gut-riching, um, how should I say, violation was the sexual harassment, um, where a high level person in county administrator to be an assistant county, uh, reporting directly, uh, uh, working directly with an assistant uh, county administrator, you know that you are in a very sensitive work environment. Your choice of words, your demeanor, your behavior um, is, it matters. 
So for the person that I'm working directly with to just start with these expectations of being able to uh, touch me um, wherever he wanted without permission, for him to start conversations that were sexually explicit and demanded that I engage in order to get a response from him or in order for me to be able to get the type of support that I needed to perform my job, I had to conform to this environment. Um, I had to um, consent to sexting, to not discreet sexual requests, but explicit, no imagination to what he was asking for. And this guy was um, your boss. At, well, he was my boss's boss's boss. <laughs> so my direct supervisor, then my my direct supervisor's director, and then their director's director, he their boss. You know, that's how high up in, in the chain of command he was. So um, this person uh, was not ignorant about human resource policy. He was not ignorant about the fact that he crossed the line. Um, he knew at what point I no longer wanted to engage and participate. It's like, okay, this might satisfy you. This might make our relationship be more friendly. It, 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 it pleases you in some way and it helps you to stay engaged with the projects and the programs I'm trying to do for the community. But on a personal level, it's, it's not working for me. I don't like it. I don't want to continue to do this. I don't, I don't want to do this. I want us to have a professional work environment. And I don't want to feel that you feel entitled to violate me in this way at will. Um, so I began to submit complaints to the Office of Professional Standards. My goal initially was to have a conversation. What I wanted to do was sit down with my supervisor, my department heads, and express to them how this environment, this culture was truly affecting me. I did not want to appear to be a crybaby, a whiner, or um, somebody who's disrupting the norm. Um, especially taking in consideration that my direct supervisor had already called me into the office and sat me down to tell me that unless I'm a team player, my future in the organization was questionable. Aretha's boss at the time is a woman named Maribel Feliciano. According to her LinkedIn profile, she still works for Broward County Government as Assistant Director, Office of Economic and Small Business Development. Her previous employment shows her as Assistant Director of Planning and Development Management from August 2015 through May 2018, during the time that Aretha says that she was sexually assaulted by Alfonso Jefferson Jr. According to her Instagram, Feliciano spoke this morning at something called the Ready Conference, Racial Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion, and was part of their power panel, Equitable Contracting and Procurement Programs. She said to me, um, I don't know what instance inspired it or what she, or, you know, why she was motivated to do it, but she called me into her office on one occasion and said, you know, you're a great employee, you're, you're doing great work, and I'm sure you can advance up in the organization, you have a very promising future, but you need to be a team player. Now, what do you think she meant by that? And you, you, you started this, this sex thing you talk about. Um, and we'll get to the guy's name in a minute because it's already out there. Uh, mm -hmm. th this started consensually between you. Not initially. It, um, some of the stuff I can't get into all of the details. Um, I even discouraged him at one point to say, hey, look, I'm, I'm actually engaged. I'm going to get married. His response was not to back off. It was like, ah, oh, it's never going to work. That's not what you want. And he continued. Wow. Um, and then when you complained. Um, yeah. And, and, and this happened a couple of other times where he made those type of advances. And it became apparent that he truly expected me to engage and to participate in order 
to be fully supported with the projects and programs that needed to get completed that were my job. Wait, so he was expecting you to do what exactly in exchange for giving your te- you're telling me if I'm hearing this right, he was expecting sexual favors or what in exchange for giving you the resources to do your job. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Uh, and, and not necessarily uh, resources in the form of um, materials and tools, but his support. I mean, at his level, if he did not support those projects and programs with the other agency directors, if it was not communicated and understood that um, I was working under, uh, I should say, with his approval, and that those projects and programs had his stamp of approval and they were green lighted to move forward. Without that green light, I, I was dead in the water for a lot of the stuff I needed to do. So when he did not satisfactorily, you know, what, whatever his mood was, you know, um, I, sometimes I wouldn't hear from him for days or for weeks. But whenever he was feeling like he wanted some sexual gratification or he just wanted a, somebody uh, to give him some kind of quick, whatever he was expecting, he would send me these very sexually explicit text messages. And the expectation was to entertain him and to respond in a way that was satisfying to him. And in exchange, he would continue to make sure that those projects and programs that we were all committed to doing anyway, it wasn't really like he was doing me a favor. They should have been doing this work anyway um, for the community. Um, so it's not like I came in and I just said, okay, do me this favor. This is stuff that was supposed to be done on behalf of Broward residents living in the unincorporated areas, but he would, um, create barriers. If he did not approve of it, then we couldn't, you know, it was pretty much uh, a, a stagnant or dead in the water. And he knew that he knew the power of his influence. He knew that he needed to sign off. He knew that I needed to interact and engage with him um, to get some of this stuff done. He knew that if we created new projects and programs that was going to lead to more assets in the community, more community resources, build resilience in these communities, in order for me to move those items forward, he would have to engage and he would have to communicate um, the approvals. So. If I wasn't sexting, if I wasn't giving him what he felt that I should in exchange for my job, he just simply would cut off communications and send that message. You give me what I want or it's not going to happen. And when so this is this sounds like classic workplace uh, sexual harassment. And when was this happening? This is 2018. Um, No, this started in 2016, shortly after I actually took the position. And I filed my first complaint actually in 2017, which leads us to discuss the audit, why the audit was necessary. Because when um, my case, along with multiple cases, it became apparent that there was no action. When employees in my position were going to the Office of Professional Standards and uh, filing complaints um, because they were experiencing sexual harassment, they were experiencing hostility in the workplace or they were experiencing retaliation or any other type of civil rights um, violation, human rights, I'm sorry, human resources policy violations. Um, If they, you know, whistleblowing for um, inappropriate use of funding and and resources, it was discovered that the Office of Professional Standards were simply not processing the cases. And in my instance, in Broward County, Mm-hmm. Go, go ahead. Well, in my particular instance, because this person um, was in such close relationship with the uh, the county administrator herself, Bertha Henry, um, the recently Bertha retired Henry, Bertha Henry, they just she, he did was her assi- direct and assistant. Yes, he was her one of her administrators. Alfonso assistants. Jefferson Jr. And uh, there's a, an article written about this. Correct. Uh, um, the article was the first article was actually written in 2019. 
Alfonso Jefferson Jr. was an assistant county administrator in Broward County in 2019 when the sexual harassment allegations against him came to light in an article in the South Florida Sun Sentinel. Instead of firing Jefferson, county administrator Bertha Henry decided to demote him, dock his pay by $30,000, and remove him from his supervisory role. Henry said the investigation revealed questionable judgment on Jefferson's part, but called the allegations unsupported. Aretha Wimberly's name was left out of the article. According to the St. Lucie County government website, Alfonso Jefferson Jr. currently works at the county as a deputy county administrator. You have to wonder if they knew about the allegations against him when they decided to hire him and where their judgment is if they placed him in a supervisory role. He did physically touch me without permission. On one instance, he did um, lure me to his office under the guise of wanting to do business. And and I want to make this clear. Let me say this before I go any further. And I want to do this because I want other women to understand something. Um, I'm going to get back to that, but I want to drift off just for a minute. The reason I'm doing these in, this interview and I'm willing to do other interviews and talk about this is because so many women do not understand that we are pressured into positions and sometimes you don't want to be the squeaky wheel, especially a black woman who is not a member of a sorority, a black woman who is not affiliated with top level positions. We don't have those protections in the workplace. We don't have those relationships where people have our back. So when you have a high ranking person who's asking you for sexual favors, who is making these comments when it's just the two of you, said in my ear when he didn't get what he wanted on one occasion, excuse it again, excuse the vulgarity. When are you gonna give me some head? You owe me. And you have to process that and go about your business day. You have to try to maintain your professional demeanor that eats you up inside. Who are you going to tell? Who are you going to talk to about it? Who's going to believe you? I'm doing this because I want other women to know you don't have to continue to suffer in silence. You don't have to make the mistake that I did, which was trying to go through all these different avenues to to address the matter, to do everything you can to not let it get to this point, trying to be discreet and not really tell. You don't want to tell and and, um, be that person. I'm here to just let you know you have to be that person. This type of spirit, this type of predator only responds when they're exposed. They're never going to leave you alone. They're never going to stop trying to punish you if you don't give them what they want. You trap yourself into this dynamic, this relationship um, that internally is eating you up because it's violating you. Until I became suicidal and my family um, felt that I needed to um, be hospitalized and make sure I didn't follow through and try again um, after the first attempt. It was only in sitting with the psychiatrist where I couldn't understand why I couldn't get a grip. I was a strong friend. I was that person that people came to when they needed encouragement. I was that person um, who told folks how to go about um, pursuing their rights, where to find resources to help them if they felt violated. And yet here I am in this position of being violated and having to go out and publicly say nice things about these people who are violating me. I'm having to go out in the public communications arena and uplift and uphold and speak positive about somebody who wants me to give him a blowjob in his office, about people who, when I reach out to them for help, did not find me worthy or deserving of them helping me, which was their job to do, of people who are, who've taken an oath to abide by the constitution 
the, the United States Constitution as well as the Constitution of the state of Florida. Um, the person who was over the Office of Professional Standards uh, at that time was a licensed attorney, but yet her she's still able to practice after participating and being complicit in sexual harassment and civil rights violations. So I'm, I'm saying all this to say, speak out. You, you, you're never going to get these people to understand your value. They're never going to choose to just do the right thing. Power concedes nothing without demand. And that's where these people are. They've pretty much commandeered our local government with this power structure where they're not adhering to the laws. They are above the law. And anyone who questions them and challenges them, they will choose to punish you as they have done to me and to my career. Um, they will choose to exercise their power and influence to intimidate you and to send the message to anybody else. If you do not go along with the program, if you do not comply, if you do not compromise your core values and beliefs, if you do not put yourself on the, just here at our disposal in whatever fashion we say, there will be hell to pay for it. 